In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is the day that the Lord has made. Here's the ten virgins. We were talking about how we didn't hear about them last night, and we we heard about them today. The message is repeated. The story of the the ten virgins, the message is repeated uh, a a, a few different times. This story of the ten virgins comes from the chapter 25 in the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, and and uh, the, the, the message of the story is watch therefore for you do not know the day or the hour that the Son of Man is coming. And ironically enough, when we hear Matthew 25, we, most of us think of the, the sheep and the goats uh, pericope from, from Jesus whenever he tells that story. Um, and, uh, you know, Matthew 25 is all about, you know, being generous and kind to the, to the needy and to the poor because these are the least of these, my brethren. This is the reason why we're doing this Habitat for Humanity house and everything that we do for the poor, we do uh, because we know that those individuals are the least of these, my brethren. But, but it's not just about those that are poor money-wise. Sometimes they're poor in spirit and they need us to lift them up. And, and this is the the, the, that place where we can look at another individual, no matter who they are, no matter where they are, no matter why they have been brought into your life at that moment, and see the, 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 uh, the, 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 we're supposed to see them the way God sees all of us, with compassion, with mercy, with love, and kindness. But that's a separate thing. <laughs> um, the reason why we bring, the reason why that story is in today's gospel is because it's a reminder of the second coming. It's a reminder of uh, this binding tie, which uh, is the end piece of the, uh, the gospel of the, the ten virgins, which is, you have to watch. For you do not know the day or the hour the Son of Man is coming. That's the message. Everything else that I'm going to tell before you in this moment, you cannot lose that. You have to be watchful. This whole week is about being watchful, being awake. And I realize it's dark. I realize that, you know, oh, I could go to sleep right now. You know, like this, you know, we, could, we have that mentality right now, you know, uh, where we could do that. But that's not, the point of the, the darkness is not because it's supposed to be a nighttime or it's supposed to be whatever. It's supposed to be dark. It's supposed to be solemn. We're not supposed to be distracted by everything that the light is shining on. Whenever, whenever it's bright, you can see all the details. No, it's dark so that we can pay more attention on the service. Because these services are supposed to puncture our heart. The words of these services are supposed to penetrate our souls. And when our eyes are distracted by all these other things, you can lose track of that. Some, t- some people think that it's dark because the, they're called kateniktikes akulutheas, but that's not, um, it's not nikta. It's not nikta. The word is not nikta means night. That's not why it's dark. Katanixi. Katanixi is, is uh, compunction. That's, where, that's, that's what that word means. And so these services are supposed to puncture. They're supposed to penetrate. Okay? That's why, that's why it's dark. Not because it's nikta, but because we don't want to be distracted. Pay attention to the service. That's why. We're supposed to be watchful and wakeful. And that message was delivered before. Even in chapter 24, we heard a little bit, uh, you know, when, when, when Jesus is talking about, oh, you know, if, he, if, this, if this landowner has a vineyard and, and people are being lazy, you know, he's going to wait until they're really lazy, then he's going to come. Because he doesn't want a lazy servant watching over his vineyard. Otherwise, the fruit's not going to come. Now, if you use that analogy, along with the parable of the ten virgins, it sounds like Jesus is purposely coming to catch us off guard. Like he wants us to fail. That's what, that's what somebody, you know, once was arguing whenever they heard some of these things. Oh, Jesus is coming at the, at, like a thief in the night. He wants to see me fail. No, he doesn't want to see us fail. 
If he wanted to see us fail, why is he warning us? Why is he giving us the warning in the first place? If he, I mean, my goodness, if I, want, if I really wanted to catch somebody, I'd let them just lull to sleep. You know, and when I was a counselor at summer camp, that's what I would do. I wouldn't tell them that I knew they were sneaking out. I would wait until they were in their conniving little ways, and then I would catch them. Because if I told them ahead of time, they wouldn't sneak out. See, that was me. I'm conniving. That's, that, that's not God. He doesn't want to see us fail, so he warns us. He tells us ahead of time, you're not going to be ready. You're not, or no, you're not going to know when the Son of Man is going to come. So be ready. When should I be ready? When is he going to come? All the time. <laughs> all the time. We need to be ready all the time. There's no, there's no, there's no, uh, wait, 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 Jesus, don't come now. <laughs> we, we don't have the authority to say that to him. And he comes in this story with the, with the, um, the, the landowner. He comes at a time where they're being the most lazy. Why? Because that's who they are. That's who they are. And God, if he's anything, is a fair and righteous judge. We cannot fool him. We cannot squeeze by. You know, we mentioned the thief on the cross in the last moments of his life that, that he lived all of this horrible life. Oh, you know, he just... He just had a good, one good moment. It wasn't just one good moment, folks. He changed his whole heart. You think Christ couldn't see that? He changed everything in his soul right at that moment. And I'm not the judge. If the thief on the cross was still lazy, God would not have said, behold, you will be with me in paradise. If he was still hateful and vengeful, God would not have said those words to him. We would not be honoring him. You cannot fool him. The change has to come from within. Not just have one, you know, one good moment and then, oh, uh, you know, I'm back to my old ways. That's not the way it's going to go. The change has to be complete. And only God, only God is the judge. I'm not the judge. My goodness, I'm easy. You can, you can come to me, Father, I've changed everything. God bless you. That's wonderful. That's great. You know, you, you'll, you can snow me all day. You can't fool him. It has to be virtuous. And there has to be enough in those lamps. That's the story of the ten virgins. Because it's not virtue that I can give to another individual. It has to be mine. It has to be yours. You have to have acquired it in your life. There has to be enough oil in your lamps. Nobody else besides God can fill it for you. And that's why at the beginning of the story, you, it says five were foolish and five were wise. But you don't know which is which. Because the, the only thing that matters is when the bridegroom comes. If the bridegroom came much later and the lamps of the foolish went out earlier and they're like, uh-oh, I don't know, I got to go out to the dealers and, and I got to change my life and acquire virtue, then the five aren't foolish anymore, are they? What makes them foolish is that they were not ready. They twiddled their life away. And when the bridegroom came, it was too late. So the message for us, beloved, as it has been really since the beginning of this week, is wake up. 
our Lord, is, it's not just a warning. He's calling us. You can look at it as a warning if you'd like. That's fine. You know, whatever, whatever it takes to wake up, that's fine. You know, if you're like me and you need eight alarm clocks, that's, you know, it works. Whatever it is to, to wake up in the morning. I, I, however you want, if you want to look at it as a warning. But eventually, he's just telling us. He's admonishing us. He's calling us closer to him. Because the closer we get to Christ, the more awake we're going to be, beloved. And not just to his second coming. The more awake we're going to be to everything. Everything. We will see things that we've never seen before. We will hear things that we've never heard before. We will experience things like, unlike we've ever experienced them before. The closer we get to Christ. And it will be beautiful. Some of it will be difficult but it'll all be beautiful because it will all lead us closer and closer to him. That's the story of the ten virgins. It wasn't that the five wise were being selfish and not giving the foolish some extra oil. It's just that they grew closer to Christ and realized, I, I'll give you what I have, but I can't give you my virtue. I can't, I can't you know, I can't squeeze it. Our Lord wants us desperately, not just this week, but this week is a good time to really call ourselves home and to really hone that skill to get closer to Christ. Let us not be left without that precious oil so that when it is time for Christ to call us, he'll know us. And he'll call us home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please rise.